<laughs> Tell me about, um, there's a wonderful moment actually when she's receiving an award at Seattle Repertory Theatre and, um, uh, and the citation speech talks about her as the architect of how we create theatre, how we teach and how we live our lives and that how we lead our lives sorry and 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 it took me back to something that Luis Buñuel the famous filmmaker said about uh, his friend Federico Garcia Lorca was that he was his own masterpiece that you know it was a, the poetry the plays but the persona everything that they represented that totality is what made them a masterpiece and it made me think about Irene that multifaceted part of Irene the writer the director the teacher um, and she had a huge influence on, on, on playwriting um, in, in the US. But what she represented in that refusal to compromise in many ways, that, that belief in, in the power of creativity and the power of the imagination uh, and, and the unconscious. And, and, and I think that that portrait comes up of this very um, multifaceted, it goes back to what we talked about earlier on layers, human being. Um, and alongside that, of course, the journey in the film in terms of your own intergenerational friendship. And it's not often that you get intergenerational friendships represented on, on film. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that, um, I think that it was, you know, people will always say like, oh, isn't it? Well, actually, you know, not, they say two things. People will say, you know, it, it's, it's such a gift, like you were able to give Irene so much. And I'll be like, are you kidding me? I mean, this, it, it's like taking a master class, you know? I mean, I took a master class, a very long master class with Irene Fornes. And, um, and, you know, and, and the exciting thing about the film is that, you know, um, is that people will also get to take the master class, you know, and they'll get to, to experience her because she was such an incredible teacher and she really was able, because she wasn't, um, she didn't teach, like nothing was done in the traditional sense. You know, she, she was able to, um, you know, she entered into things without having a degree in it, without having um, ever done it before. I mean, I think she was, if she hadn't done it before, she was all, ever the more excited to do it, you know? Intuition. Um, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, and I think, um, so I, I, I think that, you know, that's refreshing to people and it's disarming, you know, it's, it's, um, you can, you, like, how great to be taught by a, a player, you know, a, by a playwright who's, who's, you know, I, I once asked her, like, when did you first starting, start calling yourself a playwright? She's like, I don't know if I ever did, you know, I mean, it's that kind of, that kind of it's so refreshing and it's so unusual in in a world of commodification of identity um you know i mean that that she wasn't she didn't that she didn't want to be labeled that she didn't that she didn't want to be pigeonholed that you know that she could fluidly move throughout you know like you know all these different situations um you know there's there's something that, about that that's um no wonder so many people owe their, you know, playwriting careers to her, you know, it's, and, and, you know, and I, I don't think that, um, you know, and I don't think that I had I shown up with a, a, a crew and a camera and, a, you know, I mean, she says it in the film, I don't trust professionals. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, there's something about, you know, me being an amateur that like, you know, I, that we, we connected at one point I said, we were like laughing in her apartment and um, we were trying to get ready to go out and it would take forever to go outside because she would have to like, you know, try on all these outfits and then the camera would be, something would be wrong with the camera, or we'd lose an antenna or something. And um, I, I said to her, you know, she was laughing and I, and I said, do you even know who I am? And she was like, huh, I, I may, you know, I may not know who you are, but I know what you are. I know you're an artist and, um, and I didn't know, like, she knew something about me that I didn't know in myself yet. And there was another moment where she called me Florence. And I was like, who's Florence? And she goes, oh, I just, I just called you Florence. You know, I just, you just seemed like a Florence in this moment. I mean, most of the time she knew who I was. I mean, we're, you know, she knew my name. But the Florence caught me off guard. And, um, and I said, well, can you love some, something if you can't remember its name? And she laughed and she laughed for a long time. And she was like, that's the most ridiculous question I've ever heard. Yes, you'll love it more. 
<laughs> you know, so I think that, you know, it's, it's that, that thing of like, don't name it. Don't try to put it in a box. Don't try to hold on to it. You know, um, don't, don't, you know, live in the moment. I think that was the key thing about her. Wasn't she really did live yeah. in the moment. Yeah. Before we finish, Michelle, I have two more questions. One is the title. Um, the title comes from Promenade. I know everything, half of it. I really know the rest I make up. What made you decide on that title? Because you also finish uh, the film with a quote from Fefu and her friends. Um, life is theatre, theatre is life. If we're showing what life is, can be, we must do theatre. So you, you could have gone to the Fefu quote, perhaps, for the title. What made you think of the Promenade one as, as the title, the quote from Promenade as the title for the film? Well, I love Promenade. I mean, I love the music from Promenade. And Irene, um, you know, I, I said earlier that she she hadn't she wasn't remembering her play it, it, her plays in full. You know, parts of Fefo she remembered, and she remembered certain things when I met her. By the time I met her, so but she did remember the songs from Promenade. So I would bring a, a CD over, and we would sing the songs, and we would sing you know that song a lot. Um, it's from, um, from a called I, I saw a man. It's from a song called I saw a man, and um, and we we'd sing those lyrics over and over. And I was like, you know, the rest I and she we would get really animated. The rest I make up. The rest I make up. And um, and I, I we you know early on it was must have been in two thousand three when after we started filming. I was just like, I love that. The rest I make up. I was like, that would be a great title. And she was like, you know, she she agreed. So. So that was something that also felt like um, that. I mean, that, the title has always been, you know, for, I think that was the first thing before we even decided we were making anything was like, oh, well, we have the title. <laughs> so, so hopefully the rest will come. The rest will be made up. And will you do something with, because you, you shot a lot of footage for the film. Um, will you do anything else with that footage? Yeah, we're actually in the process of making, um, a book uh, with Three Hole Press. We're gonna do a book, it's gonna be called, ten, it's tentatively titled, um, Do You Have the Answer Now, My Little Camera? And it's, um, it's, it's the, all, the, from the, the, all the outtakes of the uh, footage, um, these gems, and it's, it's almost like they want it to be like, kind of like a letters to a young poet. Um, and so right now we're just transcribing, you know, the, the video, ex, you know, the, the, the bits that didn't make it in to the film and there's a you know it's over 500 hours so we have a lot of a lot of work to do but but um yeah it's an exciting i'm glad that the those pieces will live on in some way so and i was thinking because we're conducting this interview through zoom uh, at a time of lockdown for both of us in london and 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 in uh new york um or in the where you are um and i've been rereading um sections of Irene's plays and uh, mm. with the whole crisis of COVID-19 it took me back to What of the Night, one of her, for me, one of her great plays um, and I think the thing about Irene is she saw so much of what would happen when I read What of the Night it seems to me so pertinent as a play as to, to what's happening now in terms of environmentalism, the gap between rich and poor um, and I uh, went back to a quote that she wrote to the program notes of, of the play. I fear for our future. I fear that we're becoming greedy and heartless. I don't understand what's leading us uh, to these feelings. And I can't imagine anything but disaster being the outcome of our mindlessness and heartlessness. Um, and it, it made me think to, to Irene as, as in the way that many great artists are, their, their ability to, to really crystallize uh, and articulate something that's happening that that hasn't been fully articulated in 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 that moment. Um, and I wonder about Irene and what she would have made of the, the the situation we're all in now. Gosh, I mean, I I think you know the thing about Irene is that she was so her plays were way ahead of their time. You know, I mean, I think that's why they're so um, they're classics. You know, they're they're um, I think I think that her plays are going to be more and more done um, as time goes on, you know. And I I think that um, I mean, what of the night is today? You know, what of the night is? Um, I mean, mud. I mean, it's it. You know, all of the plays are are um, articulate something that um, 
that keeps being played out, you know, in in time after time. So I, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know what she would have made of this moment. I, I think she would have been teaching through it in some way. Um, I, I think that that would have been her way of, of contributing and coping with it, I think. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I also remember her, um, you know, reading in an interview um, somewhere, you know, where she said, humanity is much more moving when it's not crying over itself. And, um, and I think that, you know, she would, I mean, in the same way in the film of, of dealing with this adversity and how she confronts it or doesn't confront it, you know, I mean, or, you know, or just dances with it, you know, in that way. Um, I think it could teach us, you know, I think the film actually teaches us a lot about what it means to live through this moment that we're in. I think, you know, it's been really heartening to get messages from people watching the film and, um, and being really like refreshed and hopeful, you know, because, because of Irene's outlook on things that could potentially be really grim. And, you know, what is more grim than a terminal illness, you know, I mean that, you know, and, and in some ways we're facing, we're all like living, you know, in a, in a state of, of uncertainty and unknown in the unknown that you would experience when you're having a terminal illness. So, um, I don't know. I think that, uh, she, she, I think she would, I think she would be teaching us all something right now in the present that we, that, that we're not necessarily, um, getting, um, from reading the news. <laughs> yeah. Michelle Memron, thank you so much. Um, it's a beautiful film and thank you for talking so candidly, uh, as I, I really would have done ab about the making of this film. Well, thank you, Maria. <laughs> <laughs>